All right, well, I thought while I had both machines here, it'd be kind of neat to do a little uh, comparison video kind of of the two. So my machine that I own is a 2011 Takahuchi TL250. And this one that I've rented is a 2021 Takahuchi TL12R2, in which the R2 is just the newer model or version of the 250. So these are actually both in the same class uh, some of the quick specs on my machine it was one of the it's the first model the 250 was the first model where Takahuchi went to a Kubota engine instead of a Yanmar engine in the loaders the my excavator still has the Yanmar but I don't know I can't remember when it was either I think in 9 or 10 when they came out when it went from a 150 to a 250 but anyways I'm getting sidetracked <laughs> uh, it's got a 100 horse Kubota engine in it and it weighs I think right at 12,000 pounds maybe 12.2 I believe and the 12 still has that same Kubota engine in it they've just upped the horsepower to 114 horse and this one weighs closer to 13,000 pounds and I think the V2 series which is the vertical lift these are both radial machines but I'll go over that in a minute uh, the vertical machine, I believe, with the 4 in 1 bucket is closer to 14,000 pounds with the additional weight of the arms and stuff. But I guess some of the first things you do notice is the 12 is considerably bigger than the 250. And uh, you can also notice the track design is a little bit different. The whole machine is probably 5 or 6 inches longer than the 250, and it's also probably 4 or 5 inches wider. In the 250 so it's just all around a little bit bigger a little bit longer and i think a lot of that has to do with uh the tier four admissions trying to find some more room in these machines to put the dpf filter and the def tank and all that other stuff but it's, it feels like they've moved the seat forward just a little bit because the leg room may not be as deep as what's in the 250 just to make room like i said for all the extra engine stuff uh let's see what else there there's the plate right there the battery is behind there so it's on the opposite side from the 250 and it looks like it's much easier to get to <laughs> i kind of get them moved around here and we'll go over we'll kind of turn them where you can see i just try to kind of size them up here where you can kind of look and see i mean it's a little taller you can tell it's longer uh when we get them back to back you can tell that it's wider it does seem like it helps with the ride like it just seems like it's a little more i don't know i guess stable or not quite as rough but part of that's just because it's stretched out a little bit longer than what the uh 250 is let's see some of the other noticeable differences uh the fuel fill ups are on opposite sides which isn't a huge deal and then that one's got this has got, it does take def, like I said, it's over 74 horse, so your fuel and your def, and then this little button, depending on which one you're filling up, you can press, and it will beep at you uh, when it's getting closer to being full, and then the same thing with the def, so when you're not using them, you can just kind of leave it right there in the middle. Uh, the grease points are all pretty much the same. Like I said, the V, the vertical lift machine, is quite a bit different, and the biggest difference with that is the R is a radial lift machine, so as you raise the bucket up, it just kind of makes an arc or a radius. Uh, and I guess the vertical lift will lift a little bit taller, but it's just straight up and straight down. So I want to say the vertical lifts, I think it's four or five inches higher, maybe six, than what the radial is. Uh, this is a high flow machine. Minus what they call just standard flow, which uh, I think is like 20, 22 or 23 gallons per minute. The high flow machine will put up to 40 gallons per minute. And you can actually go in there and set the computer if you need to back that off a little bit. But like this Fecon head, it needs to be ran at 40 gallons a minute. So that's why I had to go and rent a high flow machine in order to run that. So that's what all these extra hookups are. These are right here, just the standard hookups. And then this is all the high flow stuff. Some attachments take these bigger high flow lines and then some of them just take the standard size. 
I do like this little features here where you can pull this out and move it up and down and that releases the pressure to unhook and hook these lines up. Uh, mine does not have that. Mine has a little sequence you have to run where you have the attachment on, you press the button to go one direction, hit the one way hydraulics I believe, press it the other way and then that releases the pressure on there. So if you don't do that and you unhook a line you will get covered in hydraulic fluid i found that out the first time i unhooked the preparator so that was exciting they've basically kind of redesigned the cab the door the windows and all of that so i may i may kind of go back and forth like i said this video may not be for everybody but i'm going to try to point out all the features and the things i've noticed this last week on uh the different things that they've improved of that I like. For starters, I do like the new chain down points. Mine, you either run them through the bucket right here, or I just hook them over the bucket. And then it's got two big hooks in the back. The R, you hook on the back right there. And then, which I don't know if I was gonna like this at first or not, but the front hookup is right there. So then the chain goes down the track and you don't actually chain through the arms and stuff. And I actually really like that because it's, especially where it lines up on my trailer, I can hook it up easy. Then I'm not just putting all that weight and strain on the bucket and stuff. And you can definitely tell from this view that the 12 is considerably wider. So they've changed, I mean, it's, well, it's taller. The whole, the whole machine just all around is bigger. I mean, you, the, the machine sets up taller. You can tell the tops of the cabs a little bit taller. The seat's higher. The window, you can tell, is not as tall as what the on the 250. But, like, the top of the hood and uh, where the engine goes and stuff is just quite a bit bigger. So now we'll kind of show, which just this thing is filthy, but... <laughs> And I need to open up maybe the radiators too and show you that. But uh, we'll kind of go over some of this and I'll show you what they've kind of changed on that one that I like is uh, this whole side and this tower right here. This is all the uh, hydraulic tank inside there. So you can see where you add it. You check the fluid, the lines run in there. Down there is where the suction strainer to clean the tank and everything out is. Uh, there's the battery of course. <laughs> which it runs over to here, but no plate. Uh, the air conditioner condenser and stuff is all right in there. And it's probably, that's maybe a third of it. If, I don't think it's a half of how big that thing is. And there's actually a fan in there. And then, yeah, just, you know, air filter and all that right there. So that kind of, that's kind of how that one looks. And you can kind of see everything's still kind of crammed in there even on both of them, but they've had to add more to that one. But uh, the biggest thing I noticed is on the 12, well, there's several different things. There we, can find, there we go, Got a bunch of sticks to clean out. You can tell the radiators, I think it's wider, but it's not as tall. It looks like that one's taller over there. But what I like about it is here's all the air conditioner condenser stuff where it's real easy to get to and you can blow out. Uh, the hydraulic tank, I believe, is actually underneath where your feet go uh, up front. So <laughs> there's actually nothing inside here. That is what the inside compartment looks like. It's completely open. Which is nice, especially for like this br uh, brush clearing and stuff. You can just kind of blow all the debris and stuff like that out, but you can tell that's what the machine is wider. Everything's between there, but now they don't have to put it in the sides. In the same way, this side's got a cover over it, but same way over here. There's just the lines that run to the uh, arms and stuff like that, but there's nothing inside of there. And the radiator, these two bolts right here will still swing out. Like I said, there's the battery. It's still uh, it's still crammed in here, but now you just got these three, they look like 17s to get here. And then you can get to the top of the battery and pop it right out. Uh, 
air filters in the same place there's the dpf filter so i think that's part of the reason like i said the machine is longer just to make room for all that stuff right there but yeah that's the one thing especially trying to blow the air conditioner condenser out that is really handy where this one is kind of a pain you can get this half real good but it's hard to reach the other half uh, let's see oh, this one has the backup lights up in the top here this one's got leds right there and they are extremely bright uh, i like to flip the cabs up but we'll see if we have time on that just to kind of see how everything looks in there but yeah it just seems like i do like the fact that you can get to a lot of this stuff easier it seems like i said the radiator will swing open i like to try i need to do that again and just kind of blow all this stuff out with the mulching and stuff you definitely want to keep the sticks and debris and junk like that out of there so uh nothing catches fire <clears throat> and then up front which i should have probably took this head off they've really kind of changed the designs and opened up the front this one's kind of got this step some guys complain about that that you can't see the teeth but i, don't know, I guess i'm tall enough i don't really have that problem uh you can tell the cab is just wider and just taller I mean, like i said i should have took that head off so you can see a little bit better but on the 12s they've kind of got rid of the big step and went to a lot smaller bar i guess to kind of help open up the visibility and such and then the cab is completely redesigned oh yeah this was where uh you add the hydraulic oil which is actually pretty handy to get to uh I know I'm back and forth a lot, but on the 250, you're actually supposed to take this plate off right here, and right there is where you can fill it up. I've made a funnel where I can bust that loose, fill that up, and then there's my gauge down there. And on the 250, the fuel tank is actually underneath your feet, so that's why I'm thinking the hydraulic tank is kind of up underneath your feet on the 12. <clears throat> it's got two cup holders. It's got a spot for your cell phone and a cigarette lighter charger. Uh, the HVAC system is completely redone. They've added more two vents down here. I got those two, two up there. I think there's two or three more vents than what's in the 250. It does seem like the leg room is not as deep as what it is in the 250. But I think, like I said, I think they've had to move the interior forward just a little bit. But the visibility, to me, is still great. Like I said, I mean, I'm 6'3 with a size 13 boot or whatever, and there's still plenty of room. You got a foot throttle if you want to use that. And then here's all your... Uh, your auxiliary hydraulic stuff right there there's the quick coupler which is in about the same spot as the other one they've moved the radio and hvac controls up here which i like because the other one i think the radio was kind of down over here and the hvac was back over here so those are nice to get to and here's your other switches over here on this side they've the screen is now the same as what's in like the excavator still like a six or seven inch screen but it looks just just like that now this machine's got 35.9 hours on it i think i picked it up with seven maybe seven or eight so yeah what i've got 20 28 hours or whatever on it and it's used two bars of death the fuel consumption really isn't near as bad as what i was thinking it was going to be I don't know if this tank's as big as what's on the v2s or not but it makes it almost eight hours before you run i mean i get down there and there's like two or three red bars and it starts flashing so i've not ran it completely out to see how far it'll go on that uh red light but 
and then I think this is more of the HVAC stuff and there's a filter in there that you had to change out or you need to kind of clean on the other one like I said it's a lot it's just deeper like it's just further up so got the twist throttle instead of the uh, lever uh, the windows let me see if I can uh, they slide this way instead of down and they're actually a little bit bigger it seems like so you just kind of pull them open there you got better visibility to me on this machine than what you even do on the 250 because it's got some smaller windows over there and you can look out and still see the tracks the door does seem to shut a little tighter and it's a little different to open you have that latch right there and you got a handle on both sides but i mean it's when it's shut it's they've just redesigned all that where it's just a lot tighter fit and like i said i'm comparing something that's a 2011 with 8,000 hours to one that's got 35 hours so this may loosen up a little bit over time but i like it so far like i said it just seems like it's a little bit of a tighter or better design you know i say when you want to open it oh, yeah, i need to do it just grab that and then locks out of the way uh this one is a little different when you start it up mine as soon as you put the lap bar down you just take off or this one now has the uh hydraulic lock it's still uh true pilot controls which means it's a, just hydraulically controlled there's no electronic solenoids but tell the hydraulics to move so there's no hesitation or nothing i mean you you touch it move it it's it's quick <laughs> quick and touchy uh it seems like they've done something to the final drives because to me they just they sound a little bit different and they are it's just a way quicker machine this thing probably in the low speed is almost as fast as, as mine at high speed. Like I said, I mean, all this stuff, I know I'm comparing to a 10 year old machine with a lot of hours on it. And it was, I know it was quicker when it was new, but this thing is just substantially quicker. And it just, you know, I'll try to see if you can tell on camera, but the drives just sound different. It's kind of have this whine to them. And it's not really even warmed up yet. But. I've ran it for like 10 minutes with the bucket on it and like I said I sit up high enough I can still see the teeth I mean like it, it does open that up a little more down there it opens this up a lot more it seems like because there's not as many guards over those cylinders so I can see on certain attachments and stuff how just having that little step right there uh, would change things uh, like I said it does require def I think I went over that it's got an eco mode I'm not sure that may be like a float you can set it and program it to have different attachments and flow different rates if you want I got the three on there I believe uh, let's see and then I'll just kind of do a little quick comparison of what the interior of a 2011 250 looks like which it's filthy but <laughs> you can tell it's a lot more plain Jane and like you just have a little console over here and then there's my hvac is that one there's three vents there and then this one down here which i kind of just keep closed off but and there's the hvac controls so it's just much more simple which is why it feels like i think it's got it's got just a little bit more leg room or it's you know it doesn't have the stuff over here on the sides put the lap bar down there's your throttle your front and back lights are down here. 
uh, windshield washer, quick coupler, and then HVAC stuff right there. And then when I want to close and open the door, I got a that's my release. And then this door, when you want to, still has the handles, but then when you want to open it, you push this lever forward and that releases the top. And then you can uh, open it back up. But yeah, you can tell it's, it's still, I mean, I don't know. It's like you got a little more leg room, but I can definitely tell it's not as wide as what the 12 is. And yeah, it doesn't have all the uh, frills or whatever, so. I mean, it's still a great machine. It's just kind of kind of scaled down or whatever, I guess. And it's still the true hydraulic pilot controls. Uh, let's see. But see what I was talking about, even like with the windows, it's got this pillar right here. So you got these two different ones where they've taken that pillar and they've just kind of ran it long ways this way. So then that opens up the whole top to a longer window and kind of even the bottom or whatever so you got a little bit of a blind spot there i guess but you can still look out here and see the tracks and i don't know i still think the visibility is good and all this stuff well here's kind of an interesting comparison it looks like the 250 actually goes up just a touch higher uh than the tl12 I don't know if that's just kind of the arm design or what the deal there is. Not much, just a few inches, but but you can definitely tell on the angle of the arms back here that the 250 goes up slightly higher than the 12. So it would be really interesting if I had a vertical lift machine here with these just to kind of compare the three of them. And actually when they're parked side by side like the 12 really isn't just it's just maybe i don't actually know if it's much longer maybe just a couple inches if anything so i think a lot of it is that's why they've moved the seat and stuff forward to uh now like i said fit the tier four like it, it's a little bit longer at least the tracks are i think that's what's helped kind of make it more stable they don't go straight down but i don't know it's just kind of cool to uh compare the two it's definitely wider you can tell that for sure but and i'm sure i left some stuff out of this video but i was like trying to race against the uh the daylight and the rain and junk like that moving in but i feel like i hit on a lot of the the high points or what i've noticed i was wanting to flip the cabs up and look in there but i'm probably not gonna mess with that tonight so but i definitely like this machine it's i mean it's just so quick and smooth it's a little quieter it's just a joy to run i mean it's responsive it helps having a fecon head on the front of there <laughs> that's kind of slightly addictive on uh, grinding those trees and stuff like that that's been it's been a fun past week just doing that so that thing is mean and i've kind of learned a whole new respect for the guys that do that for a living so that's a uh, that's a whole different animal than running that brush cutters. Uh, I actually had a great conversation with John from Upstate Brush Control. He was really helpful uh, after I ripped the line off and wrapped that pipe and stuff like that around there. So it was that was cool talking to him for probably, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes one morning. And he kind of gave me some pointers on how to run into this stuff and do some different, different techniques than what I was doing. So yeah, that was really, that's the cool thing about YouTube is, uh, kind of reaching out to some of these other guys that do similar work and it's not like it's your competition here in town so they don't mind talking to you and giving you some pointers and stuff so i really appreciated that yeah i guess we'll kind of wrap this video up because i'm probably about out of daylight uh if i think of anything else i may try to throw it in here at the end or if you guys have any questions or comments of anything that i left out just like i said type it in there below and i'll try to answer them as best as i can and maybe in the next couple days that thing goes back in two or three more days i may try to film a little more and see if there's anything else that i kind of can think of and i left out but i'm really liking the r and i'm kind of i need to load my truck up with it one day just to see what that's going to be like because 
Now I can't decide if I'd like to have a vertical lift or a radial lift. <laughs> and I guess that was some of the other stuff I was going to get into. I've always heard that the radial lifts are better for cutting and grading just because I guess the design with the cylinder halfway down the arm versus the vertical lifts. The cylinder is back in there, like right there where it says R2. It's back inside there. There is a bar that runs down there, but it just seems like it would almost strain those arms a little bit more cutting and grating. But on the V2, the arms are almost the same width as where that cylinder hooks on. So it's like a 10 inch arm all the way to the back. So it's a stout design. They would lift higher. I mean, I can still load my truck with either one of these machines. So I don't know, I really need to just, I was hoping to get a V2 at the same time i got this r i mean not i may take it back and try to just mess around their shop a lot but it'd be nice to have an r and a v where you could run it and do different things and kind of see uh which one you thought was better or whatever but for tonight i guess that'll be kind of my somewhat comparison video i'm sure there's some stuff i forgot or i rambled on too long but uh yeah We'll uh, get back to the mulching next week and we will just catch you guys later.